Hi! Welcome back to Movies Within Channel. Today we'll take you through an action, drama, thriller movie from 2007, called The Kingdom. In a timeline sequence, the film's opening scene describes how oil drilling has affected the Middle East and the world. It exposes the fights that have erupted over the legitimate control of the oil industry since the late 1940s. This involves the United States' participation in Iraq as well as Al expanding Qaeda's terrorist network. Eventually, it reveals the 9-11 terrorist attacks and how Saudis made up 80% of the hijackers. This raises major concerns about Saudi Arabia's relationship with the United States. The plot begins with Saudi Arabia's endless battle and the kingdom's attempts to reclaim control of their nation from terrorist radicals. While playing softball in the oil company's housing area, terrorists detonated a bomb, killing a large number of Americans as well as Saudi state police officers on the scene. The terrorists pretended to be members of the Saudi state police, and while one team hijacked a car and began shooting at residents in the area, another ran out onto the baseball diamond, pretending to assist the Americans, but then revealed that he was a suicide bomber and blew himself, killing both himself and an everyone else in the vicinity of the baseball diamond. Sergeant High Tom of the Saudi State Police disables a stolen SSP vehicle and murders the passengers, who are later identified as the thieves. Special Agent Francis Manor, the FBI's legal attaché in Saudi Arabia, contacts Special Agent Ronald Fleury, another special agent in the FBI's legal division, to inform him of the assault. Immediately after this, a second bomb detonates in the facility, killing a number of individuals, among them Manor. Fleury informs his FBI team back in the United States about the events in the kingdom, and Special Agent Janet Mays, a forensic investigator, breaks down in tears when she hears of the death of Francis. Fleury murmurs something into her ear that makes her manage her feelings. Fleury reads a document from the State Department where it states that any American presence on kingdom soil will represent a reckless risk. They all get furious about this statement, but Fleury assures them he will find a way to get authorization and tells them to keep their phones on and their luggage packed. He then goes to a meeting at the Department of Justice where he and his colleagues are told by Attorney General Young that they will not be going to Saudi Arabia. After that, Fleury goes to visit Francis Manor's family and tries to cheer up Manor's son by talking and playing with him. Then he meets with a reporter from the Washington Post and asks her to arrange a meeting with Saudi Ambassador Thalmer. He blackmails the Saudi ambassador into allowing them to enter the country on a Saudi jet so that they may carry out an inquiry. Fleury's team includes Special Agent Janet Mays, a forensic examiner, FBI analyst Adam Levitt, an intelligence analyst, and Special Agent Grant Sykes, a bomb technician. When they arrive, they are greeted by Colonel Faris Al-Ghazi, the leader of the Saudi State Police Force, which is in charge of security at the site. General Al Abdul Malik of the Sang is in charge of the investigations, and he refuses to grant Fleury and his crew permission to investigate. When the FBI team is invited to Prince Ahmed bin Khalid's palace for a dinner and Mays is denied entry due to her gender, Fleury gets the chance to persuade the prince that Colonel Al Ghazi is a natural investigator and should be given the lead on the investigation. With this new shift in leadership, the Americans are given a hands-on approach to the crime scene, where they learn that the second bomb was detonated in an ambulance and the explosives employed marbles as missiles. This leads them to discover that one of the terrorist brothers had access to ambulances and state police uniforms, and the police attacked the residents, killing a few highly armed guys. Damon Schmidt, the deputy chief of mission for the United States Embassy, then informs the Americans that they must return home. However, Fleury and Al Ghazi both think that the youngsters who had just died were only amateur fighters and not the true masterminds of the attacks. While driving to the airport, Fleury notices a teenager watching them from an overpass and then notices that the last SUV of their convoy has stopped far behind them. He then notices that a speeding car is coming towards them and grabs the wheel from Sergeant High Tom, which allows them to partially avoid the collision, which results in a trunk full of bombs detonating. It is the third vehicle in their convoy that strikes the first vehicle, killing all of the guys on board. The fourth SUV eventually arrives and the guys inside drag out Levitt, toss him into the back, and drive away as a second car comes by to kill the other Americans. Fleury manages to injure one of the attackers, and Al Ghazi hijacks a civilian vehicle to pursue the fourth SUV and the other vehicle into the Suwaiti suburb of Riyadh. As they approach, a shooter fires a rocket at them, igniting a fierce battle. Levitt is tied and gagged in the compound. His assailants are readying a video of the execution. 
It is decided by Al Ghazi that three of his men will enter and locate Levitt, while the other two will remain outside to guard against any other intruders. Al Ghazi, Fleury, and Mays enter the building, following a blood trail, and kill countless gunmen. Sykes and Hytom are watching the door. There is a small girl in an apartment, and Mays frightens her. She enters the room and meets the mother and grandpa of the family. As she urges them to remain there, she walks across the hall to discover Levitt and his armed attackers in the next apartment. The last terrorists are killed, and Al Ghazi and his squad begin to leave. Dot Mays, on the other hand, is concerned about the young girl and comes in to offer her a lollipop. Her reward is a marble that matches the one she received previously at the explosion site in exchange. Al Ghazi sees the grandpa, suspects something, and wants to assist him up so that he may examine his hand. Fleury follows the blood trail to the rear of the apartment. To corroborate his theory, Al Ghazi looks across at the elderly man's hand and notices that he lacks the four fingers he had seen in the terrorist group's video. Abu Hamza's adolescent grandson manages to shoot Al Ghazi twice in the neck with a handgun before it jams. And Fleury kills him. In response, Abu Hamza fumbles with an assault weapon and Haitam shoots him three times in the chest. The younger grandson of Abu Hamza clings to Abu Hamza as he dies, and Abu Hamza murmurs something into his ear to soothe him. Fleury comforts Al Ghazi as he dies. They meet Al Ghazi's family at his residence. Fleury tells his son that Al Ghazi was a good friend, reflecting a similar scenario earlier in the movie when he comforted Special Agent Manor's son. Levin has one more question for Fleury, what did he speak to Mace to calm her down? The scene cuts to Abu Hamza's daughter asking her son what his grandfather whispered to him as he was dying. Fleury recalls saying we're going to kill them all, while the grandson tells his mother, don't fear them, my child. We are going to kill them all. Implying that this is a never-ending, vicious cycle. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. Stay safe and see you on the next one.